ABC, I'm Brian, this is Shamrock and Records, and I just wanted to make an update and uh, say hello to all my friends in the vinyl community. Um, I haven't uh, really made a video in uh, quite some time, so uh, I'm going to try to uh, show you some things I've been uh, listening to, uh, some things I've been picking up. Um, I know in my last video, uh, I apologize about uh, that lighting in it. Uh, it was very, I guess, hard to see. Uh, I was doing it by candlelight. Had the, uh, you know, the the mood lighting. So uh, <laughs> it's now um, Tuesday morning. So I, I got my coffee, and uh, I don't have much. Uh, light from the windows coming in because it is raining right now but uh, it's it's a little more lit than normal uh, than my last video uh, anyway uh, we're listening to those darlings right now um, band from uh, Nashville this uh, was their first record uh, this one came out in uh, 2009 um, I've been listening to it quite a bit lately and uh, unfortunately, for for sad reasons, uh, the lead singer uh, Jesse Darlin uh, passed away uh, recently. Uh, in September, she passed away from cancer. And uh, you know, it's it's a shame that not a lot of people has mentioned this band, has mentioned Jesse. Um, you know, we've heard a ton about Tom Petty and Charles Bradley this year and uh, recently. Um, but Jesse Darland uh, seemed to go unnoticed. And, uh, you know, for me it was a big loss. Uh, this was one of my favorite records in 2009. Um, really, really great alt country stuff. Um, you know, all female artists. Uh, they have uh, a few more records after this one where they got a little more garage sound and a little more punk. Um, I mean, this one has that energy. Um, I don't know if you can hear in the back, but uh, man, this band, uh, they, they just really ripped. And um, if you liked, uh, or if you like Deer Tick, uh, John McCauley actually uh, appears on this record. Uh, Ian O'Neill also appears on this record. I think they were uh, actually touring a little bit together, um, you know, back in the day when like this came out. So, uh, if you like Deer Tick, you know, check this one out. Uh, this one is pretty tough to find uh, on vinyl, but you know what? Check it out online, stream it or something. Even get a CD of this. I know this one is tough to find now on vinyl, but uh, check out the other stuff. But uh, Really cool band, and I just kind of wanted to, uh, I don't know, mention Jesse, because uh, I, I haven't really seen much about uh, Jesse in the VC. So, um, let's see. On to other things uh, that I've picked up recently. Um, this one, I wanted, since it came out about a year and a half ago, for a record store day. And it was one of those records that I really wanted, but I really didn't want to spend the money. Uh, came out, it was $30. And it's, uh, you know, one of my 90s artists that, that I love. Um, 90s are a, a big part of what I enjoy, uh, you know, because like many of you guys, in the 90s, I was in high school, I was in college, and this is the stuff that I was digging on you know through those years so uh, this one here that I, I uh, finally got my hands on is a copy of Matthew Sweet's Good Friend um, really cool record it's uh, you know outtakes demos live stuff from the girlfriend sessions so if you like girlfriend this is really cool um, he has, uh, like I said, there's some live tracks on here. Here's the uh, the track listing. 
Uh, if you look on the, the D side, you can see a couple covers. Uh, Cortez the Killer and uh, Isolation. That, that, uh, the cover of uh, Cortez the Killer is really cool because he does it with uh, the Indigo Girls. And, uh, you know, I, I love the Indigo Girls. I love um, a lot of that female folk stuff. Um, I'm not going to say just 90s female folk stuff because there's, you know, tons of other female artists that I enjoy, but that stuff that came out that was being made in the 90s is, you know, what I really started getting into. Um, and I don't really remember exactly how it all started. I know, you know, there was girls that I dated that loved that stuff and really got me into it. Um, but, you know, like this band, Toad the Wet Sprocket, kind of, uh, helped me, um, because they did a song called Nancy, um, and, um, it was about Nancy Griffith, and this was a record that I picked up, um, Oh, oh, probably a month or two ago, I was with uh, Jonathan, the cheap and cheerful record collector. Uh, we went out digging in Portland one day, and this is one of the things that I found as I was with him. Um, and Nancy was uh, one of those big folk artists that I enjoyed. And uh, I couldn't pass on this. Really good record. I've listened to it a couple times now. And... Uh, my very first listen, you know, I, uh, it was a late night and I was just, you know, everybody was in bed. I was downstairs here listening to some records and I decided I was going to spin this one because I had never heard this before until I just picked it up and I'm reading like the back, uh, you know, it has all the credits and musicians and whatnot. And as I'm uh, reading it, I see that Lyle Lovett's on there, and I'm a huge Lyle Lovett fan. Um, so I was pretty pumped. Uh, Bella Fleck is on here. Uh, just really cool stuff. But uh, I, t I flip it back around. I'm looking at the cover, and what do you know? There's Lyle Lovett on the cover dancing. I, I, ooh, <laughs> that was kind of cool, that Lyle. I was like, yeah, you can't mistake that guy. But it was funny, when I first picked it up in the shop, I didn't even pay attention until I kind of like was reading the back and just looking at it and staring at this and was like, holy crap, that's Lyle. So, uh, really good one. Um, I love Nancy. I'm never going to pass on a Nancy Griffith record if I see it. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's see, what else have I picked? Oh. And I guess another female. I don't know. This is going to turn into a female thing. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so, another thing that kind of uh, back in the 90s that got me kind of listening more to female artists was this record that I finally picked up. Uh, I found a used copy on one of my road trips to Massachusetts a couple months ago. Um, and it's something that kind of, uh, I mean, everybody knows this, it was humongous in the 90s. I mean, you still hear it on the radio. Um, I love this record. As, as much success that this record had and has, I mean, millions and millions and millions of records sold, I still really like it. You know, I mean, for a while, I mean, it was very overplayed, um, but, uh, I mean, this is essential. And it, it was, this came out, oh God, man, 1995 this came out, and, uh, I remember, like, when that came out, like, that angry chick movement started going on, and, you know, I was... It kind of really enforced me listening to like Ani DeFranco and like I said I was already listening to Nancy and all that other kind of folk stuff and I don't know there was just some really cool musicians uh, in that period uh, that I love like I, I actually uh, got a message from Jonathan 
uh, just the other day asking me if I like Cheryl Wheeler. And uh, so um, I was like, yeah, yeah, I love Cheryl Wheeler. I, I saw her in, uh, at the Folk Fest in like 98, um, you know, with the Indigo Girls and, uh, you know, Dar Williams and whatever. But he was like, oh, I, I, I think I might have a little VCLT for you. So I. I'm going out with Jonathan this morning. We're going to have breakfast in a couple hours. And I uh, think he might have a little Cheryl Wheeler present VCLT for me. So I'm pretty excited about that. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going on this video. So let me get back to what I bought. Um, I <laughs> was a Discogs virgin until this past week. I had never purchased anything on Discogs. And I've had a want list set up forever. Um, I log my records in there, but I've never purchased anything. And I guess it was for, I guess, a couple different reasons why I haven't. Um, but the main reason why I never purchased anything on Discogs is because I didn't have a PayPal account set up and I just figured it was gonna be like this tedious thing to like set up this PayPal account and you know just have it linked up to like my checking account and this and that and I really didn't don't want my wife seeing what I'm buying coming out of our checking account all the time so uh, I was like eh, I don't know if I want to do that and set it up to that but then my buddy was like, oh, you can just set it up to one of your credit cards. So I was like, oh, well, if I can do that, then I'm going to buy something on Discogs. So with all of that being said, uh, I am now going to be a Discogs junkie because there's so many things on there that I want that I never find out and about. Um, but this one particularly I wanted for a long time. Uh, many, 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 many years. Another 90s record. Uh, came out in 1992. It's on Rough Trade Records. And the artist is Freedy Johnston. And the record is called Can You Fly? And uh, what a great record this is. Uh, Freedy's just a really cool singer songwriter. Uh, you know, that Americana kind of feel. Um, he. Um, he has a couple different artists on here with him uh, that appear, like Marshall Crenshaw does some uh, some guitar work on here. He does a duet with Sid Straw on here, which uh, I'll go back to the female thing. I've never listened to Sid Straw other than the duet of this song. And for all the years that I owned this CD um, and always listened to CD, I never listened to that particular track it was kind of fast because it starts off it's not Freedy singing in the beginning of the song Sid Straw opens up the song and I just was like eh, clank, and I fast forward it well since getting this record I've uh, just been listening to it through and now I'm in love with that song and that song is called Down in Love and it's uh, it's a great track if, if anybody out there likes Sid Straw and you're not really familiar with Freedy I mean, Freedy only had the one hit. He only had bad reputation. He's, you know, the the one hit wonder. Um, I think uh, that song probably came out in '94, um, which I absolutely love that entire record. But that has not been pressed on vinyl. Uh, he did put that single out um, a couple years ago on Record Store Day, uh, where it was a flip side, and I do have it behind me somewhere, but. Uh, it was a, um, a seven inch of Bad Reputation, the original by Freedy, and on the uh, B side was a cover of that song done by Death Cab for Cutie. So if you like that song, you should seek that out because uh, it, it's really cool um, little piece. It's on like uh, a light blue, I think it was a speckled little colored vinyl. But uh, anyway, some highlights on this record for me are the songs Remember Me, The Lucky One, and The Mortician's Daughter. Just absolutely wonderful stuff. Um, love this record, and I'm so happy to finally have that um, here with me now. So, um, 
Let's see, I got a little time here. Uh, yeah, let's see. So, I got another record that, um, I had pre-ordered, um, a few months ago. I've been waiting and waiting, uh, patient, impatiently probably more, I should say. Uh, cause I'd been dying to hear this record, and when I first got it in the mail, uh, I listened to it days and days and days and days and I just love this guy. I talk about him in my videos quite a bit because he is one of my favorite singers. Um, and Stephen Kellogg. And uh, he just put out this new one. It just came out a couple weeks ago. Um, this one is called the Tour de 40 live record. And basically, uh, this was his last tour. Uh, which I had mentioned in one of my videos how I was going out to Boston with my friend Mike and going to see Stephen Kellogg This here's the show uh, This is at least part of the show um, This was uh, something that he wanted to do it's called tour to 40 because His wife asked him he's, he's turning 40 years old and His wife was like well, what do you want for your 40th birthday? And Steven's like, well, I want to go on tour. We'll do a tour to 40. So uh, he hit a bunch, of, they had a bunch of dates set up. They went on the road and he did a 40th uh, birthday tour. And he played stuff from like the beginning of his career and uh, it spanned his career. Um, I don't want to say all of his hits because he's not that big, but uh, all of his hits for his fans. He does have like a cult following, I should say. Um, but it, it's, uh, you know, he's one of my favorite singers. He's He wears his heart on his sleeve. He's, uh, he, he's kind of country. He's kind of rock. Um, poppy singer-songwriter. Um, he would probably get compared or lumped in with, like, the, um, I don't know, if I want to say John Mayer's and Matt Nathanson's and that kind of thing, because I think uh, I think Stephen is a better songwriter. I th uh, he's um, I don't know. Like he he talks about his relationships with his family. He he he's written songs about his kids. He's just very down to earth. Um, I just love him and. Uh, I'm in the crowd on this, so I'm on vinyl. Finally, I I I made wax, so uh, you can hear me clapping, you can hear me hooting and hollering. Uh, but yeah, I am in the crowd for several tracks on this um, because there's a couple tracks on here that were uh, recorded um, at the Paradise in Boston. So uh, yeah, if you want to uh, pick that up and listen to me clapping. I'm on vinyl. So, uh, yeah, that that's actually only um, available on his website. Uh, it's stephenkellogg.com. Uh, if there is any... See, I'm probably the only Stephen Kellogg fan uh, left in the VC. Uh, you know, because uh, our friend Shannon D., um, who I know is a Stephen Kellogg fan as well, um, has stopped making videos. She took down her, her channel, and I know that... I'm upset by it, and I know several of the other VC members are upset by it because we've had conversations. Where is Shannon? So, Shannon, if you are still watching videos, I say hello, as does Mitch and Jeff, and uh, we miss you. Uh, we hope you come back, but uh, I I'm sure Lise misses you, um, so we, we know... Uh, we, we wish you were still making videos. But anyway, um, if you're watching Shannon, pick that up because it's, it's pretty awesome. And um, wow, we are just about 20 minutes. I'm going to stop because um, I got to go get ready to go meet Jonathan. We're going to go uh, have some breakfast, discuss records. He's going, he has an antique, uh, a spot in an antique uh, mall. 
right down the street from my house, so he he was uh, heading to my area to go fill up his uh, his um, his record bins, and uh, we figured we'd meet up and uh, have a coffee, and uh, who knows, maybe we'll even dig a little bit today. I am off, and uh, I got a couple hours to kill before I have to go pick up my daughter from school, so um, it's been fun. Thanks for listening to my uh, my little offshoots of who knows of what I was talking about, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. And uh, it's good to be back in the VC and making videos. And uh, hopefully, I'll be making uh, making some more a uh, little more frequently. Um, I had a rough uh, summer making videos and doing that because uh, you know just work. Uh, it's my busiest season at work. Uh, so I get really pulled into that and my daughter's home So I usually make my videos when my daughter's at school and with her being home constantly And it, it was just you know, I was running around doing things with her going to the beach and you know, just life so uh, Now that the falls back my daughter's in school. Hopefully I'll be making more videos and uh, spinning more records. So uh Thank you guys. Thank all of you guys for liking and commenting and subscribing. Uh, it means a ton. And um, cheers, guys. Take care.